a quick demo of some of the new things. Um, fix the bug where dragging your mouse over here with the surface selected uh, would cause a, an unavoidable crash that now doesn't happen. The updating is a little bit better. Um, I still haven't implemented a mode for updating yet. So that'll take a little bit more tricky code. Uh, redid the bone layout in here a little better. And I'm going to take a moment to uh, look at that. Just get a little closer to, to the basic sphere. First thing you need to do, or I like to do, is start out with a pivot. So a simple, a left click would just create a raw pivot, but where we have this mesh selected, I'm actually going to right click. And as you'll see here, what that did is it created a pivot inside it as a child of the parent mesh. And Andy, a little bit quicker than just making pivots and going through the whole setting the parent steps. Now that's at zero. That's fine. Let's uh, make a bone. And again here, I'm going to right click it. So the bone automatically gets made as a child of that pivot. And let's drag that bone halfway up. So I click the thing to make bones reshow. This is just pausing. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a nice aqua blue bone in there. A little crazy every day. But I want to make another bone with a bone child of that pivot. Yeah, right there, let's say. Bones kind of extend a little bit outside the pivot. Again, that might be a little confusing for you to see through the, uh, the wire mesh there. We'll get to that point. Now, let's make another bone. Again, this bone is automatically the child of that bone. Push this one right to you. loud uh, when I'm using the built-in light, so I'll go around on the This next uh, top bone here. Very quick to make the bone. Okay, so just made that bone. So let's just uh, fix it up to the top there. Now we've got four bones. That's wonderful. Um, I'm going to uh, grab this bone. You should always pick one bone to start with. Left click that, set the other bone, and set that bone as um, the main bone for all the pivots to begin with. Now here's the surface of the sphere. And, uh, I'm just going to left click that, since it is the target surface. Now we're going to push uh, back here for a little bit. Cube. Right here, cube. I'm going to make a little bit bigger. Now, because I've already set the target bone and the target uh, surface, all I have to do here now with the selection cube is hit select. And we have now assigned all of those. Um, all of the selected verts are now set to that bone. Now, something I like to do is just down to a little bit different color on the selection here. Um, I'm just going to move this off to show you what we've done. So the selection cube's down. First bone, now, I could get to that in a number of ways. It's actually 
which I just hit get bone, you'll automatically have the bone that you had targeted selected. Uh, if I move that, you'll notice all the verts are moving with that bone. I'm just going to drop that back. Now, what we're going to do here is I'm going to select the bottom half of the sphere where it will set that to the bone below. So, let's take that bone. Get it bone selected. Let's grab the key. Almost half. Now, there isn't a double middle row of vert, so we may as well just leave it like that. Okay, so we've now attached if we grab that bone, see we've attached the bottom half to the second bone. Since we're working down here anyways, let's go to the bone below that. Remember, when uh, we were just into that mesh, the top bone um, was moved in the whole upper half. What we want to do now is just grab that very, very top bone. So it's automatically go back to those. Now this yep two is just confirming that it got to step two in the assignments. Later I'll remove that just to make something show the update over here. But for now it's uh it was fuzz. So I grab the last credit in here. Yes it's a moving top. Now it's sort of fun in case something stupid happens. Let me save this. Um, so we've got our wonderful. Set that as an animation target. Too many here, there's no animation targets. But uh, let's just add a basic point. Now, actually, <laughs> that's a good reason why you save. That was my bad. Um, let's just replace that. So, <laughs> start with your uh, cube the way it needs to be. Set that as the animation target. And you notice it's chopped the cube into two surfaces. That just makes uh, the animations that, uh, that's just one of the optimizations that N3D does, so you really can't worry about that. Um, Take a pose of that. Take a pose here. Okay, just take a pose. Now, if I add an animation track, 
the seats on the flat side of the ramp. That's fine. So let's click the bows and it goes back to what it should be. Go to frame zero. Right click the bows. Set the key. Go to your last frame, frame 20. In this case, okay. set the key there. Um, what I want to do for this frame 10 and set the same key. But at frame 5, we're going to um, set a key just to start. Then I'm going to grab top bone, grab this bone. So should be should be sort of You know, I'm going to pause that there for now, um, but you could save that. It's probably the silliest match animation I've ever done, but it just shows from start to finish. You can do it from a, a raw mesh in, in 3D. Um, one other thing, I'll take a moment to go over. In your launch options, you can now set the font size of the D, which will actually change um, the sizing of everything is based on the font, so um, you can make your, your interface a little larger. Anyhow, thanks for watching.